So we begin the Gemara today on Davchov Dalet Amad Aleph, Amad Abaye, three lines from the top of the Amad. The Gemara here is continuing a halacha that Rab Khanina said before, that any time you have a suffolk about something, how to determine what happened. And you have two options. One is Raiv, to follow the majority, and the other is Karev, to look at and say that it came from what's close. So Raiv is a stronger proof than Karev is. And you follow Raiv and not Karev. So the Gemara before had a discussion, asking from the Mishnah, Braises on this, but now the Gemara brings, Rabbi said that he's going to bring a proof from a Mishnah in Nidah to the Halacha of Abchanina. So Amr Rabbi, Afana, Nami, Tanina, we learned also like the Halacha that Abchanina said, and here this Mishnah is going to discuss the Halacha of Dam Nida, when a woman sees blood, she spots blood, that she becomes Tomei. And we're talking over here about her uh, spotting the blood in the vaginal canal. And now the question is, what's the source of this blood? So Rashi here brings the Mishnah that it says there in Mesech uh, <laughs> The Mishnah there describes and says that the blood could come from two different sources. Dam Nida, that's metama, a woman, is only if it comes from the uterus. And that, that's, the, the Mishnah there says, a marshal that the, the, the body of a woman, there's a cheder, an inner room, which is the uterus, and then there's the vaginal canal, which is called a preisder, a, a, a corridor. And then above that uh, preisder, the Mishnah says, there's, a, there's an aliyah. Above that, there's a like, sort of a second floor, meaning there's a place above where the blood could drip down from, because there's a lull, there's an opening from that aliyah above the canal that the blood could come from. Okay, so the point over here is that when you find the blood in the vaginal canal, now you have a suffix. Where did this blood come from? Did it come from the uterus? And therefore that's dam nidan, she's tomei. Or maybe no, maybe it came from the aliyah, which is above the praise there, above, that, uh, above the, the place where it was spotted, and therefore it's toher. Blood from there is just like any wound that the blood is not, is not a source of tomei. So what does it say there? Dam shenimtsu praise there. Blood that's found in this corridor, Sveikai Tomei. So if you have a suffix where it comes from, it's Tomei. And when it says here Tomei, it says right away that it's a Tomei Vadai. It's not Tomei because we're unsure and therefore misuffix is Tomei. No, it's Tomei Vadai and the reason is just because we have a Chazaka, we know definitely that it came from the uterus. So what do we see over here? For Afa Gav, the Ikaliya, the Makarva, you had two options, either to say that it came from the uterus, and to say that it came from the uterus is based on Raif, because most times when a woman spots blood in that area, it comes from the uterus. But then there is it, it, a possibility though that the blood comes from, from the Aliyah, and the Aliyah is cut it, that's closer to the, to the corridor where the blood was found. But nevertheless, we say that we follow the Raif and not Karev. So this is so there, here we see this Mishnah as a source of what Rab Khanina said. And Taisus points out over here, this is something Taisus says actually throughout the entire Sugya, that the Chiddush of Rab Khanina, that you follow Raiv and not Karev, is even when you have a Karev that is a very strong Karev. And the Lashon that Taisus says is when you have a Karev that's a Muchach, a Karev that is a very strong reason to follow the Karev. Here as well, when the blood is found in the Prezder, in such a place in the Prezder, where it's closer to the Aliyah, that it would seem that it dripped in from that area above the, the, the vaginal canal. Nevertheless, we still will follow the Raif to say that it came from the uterus. So Amalei Rav, so Rav says, no, there's no Raya from there, because there it's different. There, Raif u Amrit. You're bringing an Raya from a case where, number one, most bloods, the uterus has much more blood in it than that area in the, in the Aliyah, where blood could come from there, if there's a wound there. Over here, there's a Raif, but besides that, it's also Matsi. Blood consistently comes from the uterus and flows out into the praise there. So in such a case where it's Raif and Matsi, over here, definitely you follow this and not, uh, and not Karev. Raivu Matsui Lek Lamandama. In a case where it's both Raiv and Matsui, nobody will argue that that will determine where the source of the blood is and not the Karaiv to say that it came from Dalia. But from Dalia, only if, there, if there's a wound, blood will come from there. And so there's no Raiv there and there's no Matsui, it's just Karaiv. Raiv and Matsui is definitely a stronger thing to determine than, than Karaiv. So the Mara continues, the Tani Rabchia. Okay, so here, here there's a. There's a discussion in Taisvis and a little bit in Rashi as well, what exactly the Raya, the Gemara is trying to bring now here to Rabchia, 
it would seem the Gemara is trying to prove this answer that Rav just said, but it's, it's clear from the continuation of the Gemara that it's not going to prove this answer of Rav, and the only point that we're going to see in what Rav says is that the Tume in this case, of the Dam Nida that's found in the praise there, is a Tume Vadai. It's not a Tume out of a Sophic, it's, it's a Vadai Tume. So the Tani Rav Chiyah said, Dam and Imtzah praise there, the blood that's found in this corridor, Chayav and Olav Albiyas Mikdash, if this woman now comes into the base of Mikdash while she was Tomei, she's going to have to bring a carbon. And also, if she touches Truma, then that Truma will have to be burnt. If this Truma was only a Suffolk Truma, then if she walked into the base of Mikdash, she wouldn't have to bring a carbon. Because you don't even know if she's Tomei. The carbon she would bring could be Chulin that she's bringing in the Azara. And you wouldn't have to burn the Truma either. The Truma is a Suffolk uh, Truma. It would, you, could, you can't eat it, but you don't have to burn it either. So here, Rav you see, is saying that this is a Vadai Truma. Vama Rave, Rave now also said, based on this halacha of Rabchia, Shma Mino Mid Rabchia Tlas. We can learn from what Rabchia said, three points. Shma Mino, we can learn from what he said, Rav Vekar Rav, Halecha Charev. In a case where you, you can either follow Rav or you can follow what's Karev so that you follow the Rav. So over here, going back to the point that Abai said before, that either you can follow the rev that the blood came from the uterus, or you can follow Karev to say that it came from another source, from the Aliyah, that's closer to the praise there, so you follow rev. Ushmami, no, another thing that you learn from here, Rube da Iraisa, that when you follow rev in this case, this is a halachim and a teira, that you can bring a carbon for this if you walk into the base of Mikdash when it's Tomei. Taisus explains the Chiddush over here that you say that Rube is da Iraisa, even though the Gemara already brought before on Daf Chav Gimel that the, the source of Rav is from a Pasuk, Achir Rabm Lahatay. So, what's the Chiddush here that Rube da Iraisa? So, there's two kinds of rev. There's a rev that's called Rube de Isa Kaman, when you have a rev of actually an, an actual majority of people in front of you, or let's say the case of the stores, where you don't know where the meat came from, and you have actual stores, nine stores that are selling kosher of meat and one that's not, there, that's the rev of Achir Rabm Lahatay of the Pasuk. Here, though, this is a rev which is not Isa Kaman. This is a rev based on, the, on nature, that most times blood, that, that's found in this area comes from the uterus and not from another area. So this is a rave based on uh, nature, not on an actual rave that we see here. So that's the Chiddush that even here, this rave as well is also Minatayra. Shmamina, and the third point you can learn from Rabchia, Isa Lidar Abzeda, that the halacha that Abzeda said is true. What's the halacha of Rabzeda? The Amar Abzeda, Rabzeda says, and this is going back to that uh, case that I just mentioned, that when you have meat that's found in a city, and you don't know which where it came from, which store it came from. And in the, in the city, there are nine stores that sell kosher meat, and there's one store that sells <coughs> not kosher meat. So you follow the rave, that it goes after the stores that are kosher. Now, Rav Zayda says about this, even if the, the city has walls around it and it has doors, and those doors are locked, and, and the, what that would mean is that now, if you have a suffix about where the meat came from, you could only take into account the stores in this city. And therefore, you only have the rave of the stores in this city to rely upon. What if the doors of the city are open and people are always coming and going into the city from other places? So now you would have a second rave to rely on. That besides the rave in this city, if there's another city right near or another place right near that there's also <coughs> rave kosher meat there and rave yidin, so now you have two raves to rely on to say that this meat is kosher. So Rav Zayda says that you don't need to have two raves to determine that this is kosher. One rave is good enough. The reason Rab Zayda is saying this because over there in that Gemara, this is in Ksubis, the Gemara there says that there are certain times that we're machmer when it comes to the Yichos of Kayanim, the Gemara there says you are machmer, that you need to have two raves. So what Rab Zayda says regarding the, the meat, one rave is good enough. So over here we see the same Allah here regarding this Isha. The Ha'isha over here regarding this woman, the Chidal says Medina Nu'ul is Damya. It's similar to that case where you have just one drive, and so the, 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 the city has, it's locked over here as well. Regarding this woman, you only have one rave to follow, the rave that it comes from the uterus. Rave blood comes from the uterus. And we follow rave against uh, another swat, a karave, so we see that one rave is good enough. So the Gemara asks on this, how could Rav be saying this here now, according to, according to Rabchia? V'had Ravu hu de ka'omar, Rav, though, is the one that said that the rave itself is not what we're relying on here, by the case of the woman. Rav umotzi, that when in a case where it's both, there's a rave that blood comes from the uterus, and additionally it's motzi, but blood consistently flows from that source. So over here, nobody disagrees with this. So it's not just one simple rave. 
And so the Gemara, Hodebe Rave Mahahi. The fact that Rave is now saying this point here on, on what Rabbi said, it must be that Rave retracted from what he said before. That in this case, it's a Rave and Motzi. It's not considered to be a Rave and a Motzi. It's just a Rave that we follow against the Kodif. Why is it a motzi? It's a matzi. Yeah, and a chanami. I know. I didn't see a hezber why uh, he, t- he doesn't consider the motzi here to be a second svara. It's just uh, it's just a rave, and uh, the motzi is not a second svara here. Itmar, we learned the following machlekes that's related to this shaila here. Whether we follow the majority or that we follow kariv, what's what's closer? Chavis shetzafa benar. You see a barrel of wine that is floating on the river. Now, you don't know what this barrel of wine is. Is it from a yid and it's good, it's kosher to drink, or it comes from a guy and it could be yayin esach? Oh, my Rav, so Rav says, you have to see where you found it. Nips is connected to Rubi Yisrael. You found it near a city that's mostly yidin, with teres. So you're allowed to uh, drink it. You can assume that it came from the people of the city. You find a barrel of wine near a city that's mostly guy and asura. So then you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to uh, drink it. Okay, so you clearly here see that Rav says you have to see which city it's closer to. Shmuel Omar, however, Shmuel says, no, that doesn't determine this. Afila Nimtsis Kenegadesh Rubi Yisrael, even if it's closer to a city that's mostly Eden, Asuda, you're still not allowed to drink it. Why? Because Eimer, my high Dikra Asoy. I can say, or the Bachir's greatest, Me'ihi Dikira Asoy. I can say that maybe this spiral floated down the river here and it came from another area that's called Ihi Dikira, which is the area which is all Goyim. And therefore the wine is Yain Nesach. Meaning you don't follow the city that it's near, but you follow the Raiv. And the Raiv people there in Bavel, and even from a city that's all the way up the Euphrates River, can be from Goyim. So Sadiq Mara says, with the Rabchanina Kamiflagi. It seems like Rab and Shmuel are arguing in the point that Rabchanina said. The Ma'ar is the Rabchanina. That Shmuel that says that you don't follow what city it's closer to. You follow the Roy, that it can therefore you say it could be coming from the majority and even from another city. You have Goyim, he's, he's passing like Rab Khanina. Umar, let's say the Rab Khanina. And Rav, though, that says that you go according to the city it's closer to, says that you follow Karif. You don't look at the Roy that it could have come from other places. You look at which city it's closer to, it doesn't hold up Rab Khanina. So the Gemara says, no, like, that's not the basis of their argument. The Kulalme is Lul Rab Khanina. Everybody would hold regarding this barrel of wine on a river that you wouldn't follow what's kariv, you would follow what's raiv, where it came from. But over here though, a barrel floating on a river, there's a different thing. In a river, you have to look at the nature of the river. Here, the Machlekes of Rav and Shmuel is regarding the river as follows. The Mars of our Rav's opinion is that if it's true that it came from that far away place, up the Euphrates River where there's Goyim living there, <laughs> so it wouldn't, it wouldn't make it down all the way here in the area where you found it, because Akuli Upshuri have a The waves and the different, uh, the, uh, how, do you, how do they translate Akuli over there? Different ways how the river flows and also the overflow Pshuri, the, that this refers to snow that melts and that overflows the river, it would have drowned this barrel. It wouldn't have made it down here to this area in the river. So on a river, you can't follow a river of other places. If you found it in this area, it's safe to assume that it came from the area close by. That's why here you follow a river. But Umar Sava, Shmuel says that no, even in a river, it is possible that it can flow from a far place. Because Kharifa Denari Nakat Vasoi. It's very possible that it got into a certain current in the river and it and it went quickly and it flowed straight down from a faraway place to where you found it, and therefore you have to be chayshish that uh, it comes from a place that it's from Goyim. So you could follow that ray from a faraway place. Another story the Gemara says, Ahu Chatzva, the Khamra, there was a barrel of wine, the Shtakh Bipardesa, that was found in that someone hid inside a vineyard. The Arla. Now this vineyard was from Arla, the first three years of Arla, which is also to have any anna from it. And now the question is, what's this barrel doing here? Someone took it from somewhere, someone stole it from somewhere and dropped it and hid it over here in this vineyard. So are you allowed to eat it or not? Sharia Ravina. Ravina says that it was, it's allowed. What? Now why is it allowed? It's found over here in this vineyard, which is, which is Arla. Right, so right over here, if you're going to follow what's karev, if you're going to follow the status of this vineyard, it should be Asr. LMI, you're going to say, well, most vineyards, Raiv, are not Arla. So if you find it, even though it's in this vineyard that's Asr, but nevertheless, I follow Raiv that says that it's probably not Arla. And that's why Ravina said that it's allowed. So Leim, shall we say, Mishum de Savala, Kedir Rabchanina. Ravina passed in this way because he's following Rabchanina's logic, that you go after Raiv, not after the place where it's closest to where it was found. 
So the Gemara says, no, here there's another reason to believe that it doesn't come from this vineyard. Shani Hossam, the Imignav Mina. If the person that stole this barrel of wine would have stolen it from this vineyard here, he wouldn't have came and, and stored it and hid it over here in this vineyard because he would be afraid that the owner of this vineyard here would discover it. So the fact that it was found hidden over here in this vineyard, that itself is actually an indication that it doesn't come from here. And therefore I say that it's allowed. But the Gemara says, This is only if you found a barrel of wine. I will envy you, but if you found grapes, matzni. People will hide it here in this vineyard, even if they took it from here. So what's not so easy to discover, and therefore it's, it's very possible that it came from this vineyard and it would be oser. Another story, Hanaziki the Khamre, there were these flasks of wine, the Shtakham Bey Kufoi, that were found between the vines of a vineyard that belonged to <coughs> that belonged to Eden. And Sharanu Rava, and Rava said that it's allowed, they're allowed to drink from it. So Sadiqmara so says here the opposite comes out the opposite. Rava, it was found in a place that it belongs to Eden. And Rabbi said it's allowed. So, Chayre, what's the reason? Because if it's found in a vineyard of Yidin, so you assume that these flasks came from here, from this place, which is Karev. And we're not going to think that maybe it came from the Rav, maybe it came from other vineyards, and the Rav is, is not uh, from Yidin. So, Leim, uh, shall we say, He doesn't hold of what Rabbi Chanina says, that you should follow Rav, you follow Karev, the place where it was found, and therefore he says it was Mutter. So the Gemara answer is no. Over there also, you have to look at the nature of things. It's different. Shani also the Rube the Shfuchoi Yisrael Nino. In that time, in that area, most of the people that were wine producers that would pour wine from the big barrels into into these smaller flasks. This is the this was Yidden, and because it's the Yidden that the ones that were producing and uh, making this wine, so therefore it's mostly all Yidden. So, but the Gemara now says about this Vahani Mili Beravrivi. If these flasks that were found were bigger. And therefore, you're not going to be chayshish that maybe there were smaller flasks of wine that came from goyim that were passers by that are carrying these small uh, bottles of wine. Right? So we're not talking here about massive barrels, but we're talking about ravrevi that are flasks of wine that are not just small bottles that people carry with them when they travel. So if it's bigger, if, if it's bigger flasks, then I say that this is probably from what the Eden uh, they prepared and they're, they're, they're the wine producers of this wine. Avuzutri, but if it's just small bottles of wine, so then So then I can't say that it's mistaver that it comes from Yidden because most Yidden are the ones that produce the wine. Some bottles of wine, it could be Gaim that are that are traveling with their bottles of wine. If you find these bigger flasks of wine together with smaller bottles of wine, so then I will still say that it probably came from the Yidden. And I, the smaller bottles with them, which even people that are stam passing by have with them. But but still, I would say what happened is, it's the Yidin that produced this wine, and they're bigger flasks of wine. And the reason why the small bottles of wine together with them, because sometimes when you uh, have these big barrels of wine, and you're carrying them, let's say on a donkey, and you have... Some that are going on one side of the donkey and some are going on the other side in order to balance out the weight on both sides. So if it's not equal, so you'll just take some wine and put it in a small bottle to equal out the weight. So if you see that there's bigger flasks together with bottles of wine, you'll still assume that this is probably from a wine producer that produced the wine this way and sold it this way. And that the, that the only reason there were small barrels was to wait that, that the weight should be equal on both sides. So therefore, it's still going to be mutter. You have to distance trees from outside of a city. Esrim v'chomish ama, twenty-five amas outside the city. Ubacharuvu b'shikma by a carob tree or a sycamore tree. Chamishim ama. You have to distance it fifty amas from the city. As we'll see, the Gemara will say the reason is because in order for the city to be beautiful, it has to have that open area outside of the city, either 25 amas or by those trees, 50 amas. Now the Mepharshim here say that this halacha is only regarding Eretz Yisrael. Because of Yishuv Eretz Yisrael, the Chacham were Masakin, that it should be beautiful cities. But outside Eretz Yisrael, this halacha does not apply. And therefore, this halacha is not brought in Shulchan Aruch halacha because even in Eretz Yisrael itself, it's only in a time when you have most Yidin living there and you have the cities of Yidin there, this halacha applies. Abishol says, call Elon Srak, any empty trees that don't produce fruits, Chamishimama. 
you have to distance it from the city, 50 yamas, because these kind of trees that don't produce fruits is not nice for the city. If this is a city that was there first, and now the person came and planted his trees outside the city after that, then kites it, then people of the city come and cut off his tree, the and and they don't have to pay him for the loss that they've cut down his tree. Vim Elon Kadam, but if he planted his trees there first, and now afterwards they there was a city that was developed and was settled there. Then kites it, they can cut down his tree, but they have to pay him for the value of this tree that they cut down. If it's, if it's not clear what was there first, this tree or the city, then the tree is cut down and you don't have to pay him money for this. Okay, the Gemara will explain this whole thing. Okay, so the Gemara starts off with Allah here. Why is it that you shouldn't plant uh, trees outside a city? My time, what's the reason for this? Omar Ullah, so Ullah says, the reason is, for the beauty of the city, that it should have that open area outside the city, not to plant either 25 or 50 yamas outside of the city. Why do you have to say that this is the reason and it's only 25 Amis or 50 Amis? Why can't we learn out from what it says in the Pasik that it says in the Psukim when it describes the cities of the Levian, where they lived in, that you have to have an area of a thousand Amis outside the city, or it says a thousand Amis or two thousand Amis, you have to have that area outside the city that it should be an empty area. And if that, that empty area, you're not allowed to plant as a field, as a garden or grain or anything. And this the same thing, an area which is a sada, you're not, you don't keep it empty. So it, it, based on what it says in the psukim, the way you should uh, you have the empty area outside the city. So over there, it says much more than just 25 or 50 yamas. In the psukim, it says a thousand yamas outside the city should be clear. And so the Gemara, the Mishnah of our Mishnah is only according to this opinion, the Rabbi Laza. The Omar, Rabbi Laza said, that this halacha does not apply to all cities in Eretz Yisrael. You are allowed to make an area that's a field into an empty area or an empty area that should be a field because that Pasuk that speaks about this is only regarding the cities of the Levian. It's not regarding all cities in Eretz Yisrael. So therefore, So we hear the Mishnah is saying that the Chachamim said that for the beauty of a city, at least 50, 25 Amis outside the city, you shouldn't plant a tree. That's according to Rabbi Lazar. The Gemara adds even more, Ula Rabban and Ami. Even according to the Rabban that say, the Omri, ain't nice and Migrash, will Migrash saw that it does apply to all cities of Eretz Yisrael that you should keep this empty area of a thousand Amis outside the city. Hanimili Zroyim. What that means is that in that area that's supposed to remain empty, you shouldn't plant Zroyim. You shouldn't plant grain or a garden over there in that area. Avul Ilanais. But if, if you're keeping it empty, you're just planting trees there, not a garden or a grain of Dina. That you are allowed as far as the Pasuk is concerned. And but and over here, we're saying that at least 25 Amis out of the city, or 50 Amis, it should, it should be left clear and empty for the beauty of the city. So that's the addition of our Mishnah. It says, Where do I see that there's a difference? When you take an open area and you plant over there a zrayim, you plant over there a garden. It's different if you're planting a garden or if you're planting trees there. Because the Tanya, we learned in the Braise, Karfif Yesim Ibeis Asayim. So this halacha of Karfif Yesim Ibeis Asayim is regarding Shabbos, with Chachamim, with Geyser, that when you have an area which is Rishus Hayachit, it's an enclosed area with a wall around it. And it but it's, it's bigger than Beis Asayim. That's the size of the Chatzar of the Mishkan that it was uh, 50 by 100 amas, and this is an area that's enclosed. And so an area like this, which is enclosed, and it's not made for anyone to live there. Let's say it's like a park. You have a park that has a fence around it, but it's large enough, more than base asylum, and nobody lives there. In such an area, that you're not allowed to carry more than dollar amas, just like a Rosh Hashanah. So what happens if you have this area, this karfif, that's more than base asylum? Shahukaf ladira. But when it wasn't closed, it wasn't closed with the, with the intention that a person should be living there. So in such a case, because it's, it was made for a person to live there, so then it has the halacha of a regular rishos hayacha that you're allowed to carry there. But now after that, what happened is, nizra rubai, most of it now was planted as a garden. 
Then Areo Kigino. Now, the status of this place changes. It becomes just like a big open garden, which has this fence around it, but it's a very, it's, it's bigger than base Asai and Vasa. And then the halacha will apply that Chacham will go in this area that you can't carry uh, more than Dal Damas. Nita Ruboy, but of this area that was enclosed with the intention to live there, but now there were trees that were planted in it, even if most of the areas, there's a lot of trees that are planted there, it's still just considered to be like a courtyard of a person's dwelling, and you're allowed to carry there. So you see that when you plant trees, it doesn't change the area and taking it away from its status of being a place that you live in. So therefore, over here as well, mitzad, what it says in the Pasik, that a migrash is supposed to remain empty, you would be allowed to plant trees. And that, that thousand amas, you could plant trees. It's only the 25 amas that the Mishnah is saying that you shouldn't plant the trees. The Mishnah said, v'me'ir kodma, if the city was there first, and now someone came and planted trees there in the area that he wasn't supposed to, kaitzitz, so the people of the city can cut this tree, ve'ein anaysen damim b'cholo, and they don't have to pay him for the value of the tree that they cut down. So the Gemara asks from a similar halacha that we have here later in the next daf. What's the difference between what we learned here and what it says later regarding a pit? Over there also it's talking about a case where one person has a pit in his, in his uh, property and the neighbor plants a tree. After that pit was there, the neighbor comes and plants a tree and the roots of the tree can ruin his pit. So what does it say over there? The Ktoni, there it says, Kaitzitz, that the one that has the pit can, can cut down your tree. But Venaisen Dame, he has to pay you for the value of your tree that he cut down. Here we're saying that if the tree, if the city was there first and you planted the tree afterwards, they can cut down your tree and they don't have to pay you for this. What's the difference? So over there it says that you have to pay him for the tree, for the tree. Here it says the people of the city can cut down your tree and they don't have to pay you for it. Ahmad of Kahana, so Rav Kahana answers, the reason is because Kidra, the Beishutfi, a pot that's owned by partners, will not be hot and will not be cold. The Bachir adds, Hainu the Omri Inshi. This is based on the saying that people say when you have a partnership in something, so of a pot, so then it's not going to be hot and not going to be cold because everybody's relying on someone else to take care of this matter. So therefore, it's not going to get cooked properly. The same thing over here, if you're going to say that when you have cut down this tree, you have to pay him for the value of the tree that you cut down, everyone's going to say, I should pay, you should pay, who's going to pay? So therefore, no one's going to pay him, and therefore they're not going to be able to cut down the tree. So therefore, Chachamim were masakin for the beauty of the cities in Eretz Yisrael, that you should have the right to cut it down, and you shouldn't have to charge anybody in the city, so there won't be an argument who's going to pay him for this. So Frank the Gemara, my question, what was Bechlal our question? Why were we comparing the case of the tree and the city to the case of the tree and the pit? And we had to give this answer of Kedere de Beishutfi. Dilma, maybe I can give you a simple answer. Shani hezeke de rabim hezeke de yachid. It's different when your tree is causing a damage to a whole city, and therefore by the city we say that the tree is cut down, and you're not paid for this. Mezeke de yachid, by the pit over there, your tree, the roots of your tree is causing just a damage for one individual. So maybe an individual doesn't have the rights to cut down your tree without compensating you for this. But maybe since our mission is talking about a city, so therefore they don't have to compensate you. Says the Gemara, you're right, that's a good answer for this question. But if this statement of Rav Kahana was quoted in reference to the, in regards to this Mishnah, it was quoted regarding what the Seif of the Mishnah says. The next Allah of the Mishnah was, if the tree was planted there first, and then afterwards the city developed in that area, so then the people of the city cut down the tree, and after they cut it down, then they pay you money for the value of the tree that they cut down. So the question is, why are they first cutting down the tree? Valei Muluhu, the owner of this tree, should say to the people of the city, Domi, first pay me, compensate me for the tree that you're cutting down, and then I'll cut it down, or then you can cut it down. Why do you cut down the tree first and only pay him afterwards? It's on this that Rav Kahane said, Omer Rav Kahane, Kidra de Beishutfi, that when you have a pot that's owned by partners, it's not going to be hot and it's not going to be cold. And therefore, over here, in this, in this uh, case, if you're going to tell the people of the city that they first have to pay, and only, <laughs> and only then they can cut down the, the tree, what's going to happen is, no one's going to want to pay them and the tree's never going to get cut down. So the first thing is, we allow them to cut down the tree. And then afterwards, they'll figure out how they're going to pay them. The last halacha of the Mishnah said is, if it's a doubt whether the tree came first or whether the city came first. So in such a case, 
Kaitzitz, you cut down this tree, but they ain't nice and dumb. They don't have to pay him the money for the tree. It's possible that uh, the city came first and they don't owe him any money, so they don't pay. So here there's another thing the Gemara asks from the halacha by a pit. Why is this different than a tree that was planted and there's a pit by the neighbor's property? The Omrit of there the halacha says when there's a suffix, what came first, the tree or the pit, there the halacha is lo yakas. You don't cut it down at all. Over here, in a case where it's a suffix, what's the halacha that you cut it down? It's just that you don't give him money for this. Answers the Gemara over there, it's based on, uh, because over there the halacha is different. Hasam, the vadai, lava make its koi. Because over there, it, when it's a vadai, meaning if it's definite, if, it's, if you know for a fact that the tree was planted before the pit, you don't cut down the tree at all. That's the halacha over there. Right, the, the, by a pit, the one that came first has the right to be there first. So if the tree was planted first, it's, it doesn't have to be cut down at all. So therefore, kites. So therefore, now if you have a suffix, what came first, the tree or the pit, we can't tell him to cut it down. Why should, why should he lose this tree? Prove it that, that your pit came first and then we'll cut it down. However, here regarding the tree that's near the city, the Vadila make it sky. Over here, either way, you have to cut down the tree. The only difference is whether he gets compensated for the tree or not. But either way, you cut down the tree near the city. So So even if it's a suffix, what came first, you cut down his tree. And I, he's going to say, compensate me for my tree. So in that we say, I'm reading late. I see Rai Yishkoel. Bring a Rai that your tree was here first and you take that money. So the the money, you won't get paid. So that's why the halacha of the tree is different uh, by the city than it is by the pit. You have to distance a gairen, a place that's a, a, a threshing floor where they thresh the tvua and they also do the winnowing. And what happens is the chaff that flies from this winnowing will then go on different fields around on a person's uh, garden and it will dry things up. It will cause damage to the areas around. So you have to distance this, this threshing and the winnowing from the city, 50 amas away from the city. And therefore, you shouldn't have this threshing area within your property. Unless you have 50 amas of a distance to each side, so the chaff shouldn't fly into other people's properties. You have to distance your, your winnowing from your friend's trees that are growing, and also from his property that he plowed, so that your winnowing should not cause any damage to those areas. Okay, so now the Gemara understands that the Seifa of the Mishnah is saying something different than the Reisha. What did it say in the Reisha of the Mishnah? 50 Yamas. Right? And then afterwards it said, Umarchik. You also have to distance from your friend's property, the Netias, and from his plowed fields, Tichdei Shaloi Yazik. Here it just said how much you have to distance in order that it shouldn't damage, which is even less. That doesn't say the Shira 50 Amis here. So the Gemara asks, Maishna Reisho, Maishna Seife. Why in the Reisho did it say 50 Amis? And in the Seife it only says that you shouldn't be Mazik. Amar Abayas, Abayas says Seife. In the Seife it's another case. Oson, Legairen She'ene Kavua. It's talking about when a person has a place that he's threshing and he's winnowing, but it's not, it's, he's not there permanently. So therefore, it's enough that he should be, he should be Marchik, but they should Yazik. It doesn't have to be 50 Yamas. What does this mean that it's not, uh, it's not the place that is permanent? If he doesn't use this winnowing shovel that he uses when you have a big amount of, uh, of kernels, then it's, it's not permanent. But if you're using that winnowing shovel, so then it's kavua, and there you have to distance 50 amas. Ravashi Omar, Ravashi says a different shot in our Mishnah. If the Reisha and the Seif is really all one aloha, 50 amas. And Ma Tam Koma, the Seif is just giving the reason for what it says in the Reisha. My time in Marchik and Goyen Kavu, Menech Hamishim Amma. Why do you have to distance your place that you have your threshing floor and you do your winnowing 50 amas? Kadesh Yazik. In order that, the shaft that blows should not be Masik. So that the Seif is just the reason for the Reisha. So the Gemara asks an Abayis Pshat that said that it's two different halachas. Meisvei, what does it say in the Brayse? Marchikin goiren kavua minair chamishem ama. You have to distance your permanent goiren from a city fifty amas. O kishem shemarchikin minair chamishem ama. Just like you have to distance from a city fifty amas. Kach marchikin midluav umikshuav minitu yisav minire shalchaveira chamishem ama. So too you should distance your winnowing from the gourds or from the squash or from the trees that or from the plowed field from your friend, 50 amas, kadei shaloi yazik, in order that you shouldn't damage his property. 
So the Gemara says, Bishlam ala Ravashi Nicha. According to Ravashi, we see here in the Lashon of the Braise, it says, Chamisha Mama, and it says, Kadesh Lo Yazik. It's one and the same point. The 50 Amis is in order that it shouldn't be Mazik, like he touched in our Mishnah. El la Abaye, however, according to Abaye, Kashye, according to Abaye, the Mishnah said that there's a shear of 50 Yamas, and then the Mishnah said there's another shear of Kadesh Lo Yazik. And over here, in the Lashon of the Braise, we see that this goes together. It's Chamisha Mama and Kadesh Lo Yazik. Says the Gemara Kashia. That's a question on Abaya. Now the Gemara explains, and this is a question both on the Brais and on the Mishnah as well. Why do you have to distance from a person's plowed field? It's understood why, if your friend has a property that he grows gourds or he has a squash there, so you have to distance from his field. You're winnowing the Azul Afke, the Osi Belibe. Because the, the, the dust or the, the chaff that flies from your winnowing, it goes into the flowers of those gardens and it, it, it dries it up, it ruins it. Umatsile, umatsile. What's one second? What's the. Yeah, yeah, Motsile means that it sort of burns and dries up the, the moisture of these flowers. But Ella Mimiroi, when it says that you have to distance from his plowed field, am I? Why, what's, what's, how will you damage his plowed field with your winnowing? The reason is, what happens with this chaff is, when it flies into this plowed field and it, it settles there, it turns it into muddy, it becomes like a fertilizer for this field. And if we have too much of it, it also ruins and, and causes damage to the things that are going to be planted later in this field. So therefore, you're going to have to distance it from those plowed fields.